Howdy, folks, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages. It's time for a Equity Guru Investor Roundtable. I'm Rob down here in the corner, living in the basement with my pal TK. He's over there with the cool glasses. Uh, CP, the guru himself, Chris Perry is upstairs, and way over yonder is the chart attack master, Mr. Vichelle Vitura. We're going to start with Chris today. We're going to talk about Amped. We talked to them back about them, I should say, back in September. Holy smokes, time flies. Under CEO Anthony Brown, the next generation digital media infrastructure company. Is that what we're talking about here, Chris Perry? That's what we're talking about. We actually, we've been talking about these guys for a while. We talked about them back in last December when they were at 12 cents and September and now. Uh, Anyone who got back, got in back then is uh, riding a nice rise. Um, So, the the Coles notes on Amped is uh, what they call it is high performance computing. That's kind of a catch all for a whole lot of things. Think back, if you will, to the early days of the internet when uh, things like Real Player and Napster were kind of popular. Uh, the the ways to to consume video and audio were very um, cutting edge at the time because they they basically worked. Uh, but at a very low bit rate, very low quality. People were listening to MIDIs back then. Mm. If you understand what a MIDI is, then you really are aging yourself. Um, Galen in the control room is smiling away. It's a it's a middle sized beer in New South Wales. Is a MIDI? Is a MIDI that you are mi- MIDIs you and are correct, sir. Oh, yeah. The the most important version of the MIDI. Right. Uh, so back then, uh, in the the golden days of the internet, when uh, we were all had modems that went. Um, it was pretty impossible to get any sort of video happening online of any consequence. Um, you know, some audio, but it required peer-to-peer technology because you couldn't really have one central database where it was all flowing. Today, Spotify is a thing. Netflix is a thing. We're talking about the metaverse and whatnot. And basically, the internet has to grow up for all of that stuff to really work. Right now, the internet is built for one-way video uh, or one-way music or e-commerce. That's pretty much it. If you were wanted to play video games like uh, Netflix distributes movies with, you know, where you're connected to like a central repository of all the video games in the world, you would need video going back and forth. And that's just not possible in today's internet. Um, so what uh, Amped is doing is basically saying, okay, so for the next wave of computing needs, Artificial intelligence, big data, uh, basically 5G levels of, of uh, heft, you need a whole new internet. And, and, and though building an entire new internet would require trillions of dollars and it's not going to happen from one company, uh, what they can do is they can go out to companies like Boeing that might have a really, really data heavy research project. And instead of sending that data across the internet for two years, while it all goes in, and into a, a central body and gets computed, AMP just basically builds a pipeline from one side of their building to the parking lot, builds a data center of like ultra high performance computers, and that stuff is basically piped in. So in real world terms, they've got to deal with uh, Bardell Entertainment, which creates uh, Rick and Morty, uh, which we're all familiar with, hopefully. Um, and uh, they do a lot of animated uh, movies, animated TV. So video rendering on that scale is really, really, really intensive computer stuff. So you don't want to just be shooting that stuff on the internet to an Amazon Web Services server uh, because you're going to get killed on bandwidth fees. You're going to get killed on on, uh, computational needs. When Black Friday comes along and Amazon takes all of their bandwidth for themselves and you're sitting there trying to render your TV show that has to be uh, on Discovery Channel by Monday, you're kind of out of luck. So Bardell came to come to Amped Amped build a giant data center across the across the block from Bardell, and now they're just like running things around the clock in bespoke setups that have all the tools that that customer needs, rather than the the tools that Amazon would like everybody to use. So that's the the basics of it. Now, as you expand out from that, there's a lot of things you can do with high performance computing. Uh, Facebook watches or Meta watches will have seen Mark Zuckerberg's unfortunate, awkward announcement of the metaverse uh, that apparently, if we're to believe him, will involve 
an avatar of him floating around in a skeleton outfit saying, what's happening, young friends? <laughs> <laughs> if you've seen uh, Ready Player One, the Spielberg movie from a couple of years ago, where uh, it basically illustrates the potential of a heavy uh, uh, metaverse uh, where, you know, basically second life on steroids, right? Where you can be whoever you want to be. You can do a whole range of things. You can sit at home, get your work done, play, uh, seduce somebody, blah, blah, blah. In order for that to work, you need to do essentially what Amped is doing. Mm -hmm. Now, Facebook's putting $10 billion and 10,000 employees towards this, and they will fuck it up. Same way they fucked up crypto, same way they fuck up everything else. So, But the fact that they're doing that means you're about to get into an arms race for that sort of technology or that end result. Mm -hmm. So Amped is right in the midst of where they need to be to be the perfect spot for that they're either going to get a lot of business or they're going to get acquired that's just the way it's going to be uh the reason their stock is going up is because the metaverse suddenly has become a big thing previous to that it's been heavy lifting to get their stock up because they're really tech heavy and people don't really understand yet the need for it because it's not right in front of them but one thing they are involved in and not to take everybody's uh, time but uh virtual movie production is something that amped is involved with so Traditionally, a movie production, you go out to Arizona, you build a Wild West town, you bring all your cameras and equipment and people out, and you'd film it in the hours you have of sunlight. What studios are doing now instead is building a studio with a giant LED wall, 60 foot high, wrapping around over the top, wrapping around underneath, full circle, and using video game engines to build the background on the fly. You want a Wild West town, da -da 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 -da, it's done. You want the, the sun to be moved from this side to that side. We shift it across. The lights on the actors come from the background uh, and you can create anything you want without having to go out and actually get a carpenter building a Millennium Falcon for you for two months. If you need to do reshoots, you just do reshoots because you can see what it looks like as it's being filmed. So this is brand new technology and it is exploding in the movie production side of things. Uh, Amped is working in this area. They're putting together a facility in Vancouver that once it's finished, will be booked out permanently and just be a money magnet. That's my short story on Amped. Um, the, the long story on it is something that we could sit down and talk for two hours about, but I've been telling this story for the last two years. I'm glad to see it all coming together. Yes, indeed. Vancouver-based under Anthony Brown, AMPD on the Canadian exchange, AMPD, AMPD, and TK is going to talk about financials a little deeper. Awesome. It's kind of interesting how, you know, Chris touched on the general ecosystem, and that's what the company has set out to do. And to make things even better, they're executing on those ideas. So I'll just take a small sample from, from August 2021 to September. They made some acquisitions, uh, Cloud Day Computing. Basically, it's a software com uh, infrastructure company. So these kind of acquisitions, acquisitions are important because the cloud software service side of the business is very, it has high barriers of entry. You have to make a lot of investments into the infrastructure and it's very difficult for companies to exist, but there's such a high demand for you know, elastic demand, computing demand, ETC. Uh, so they're making these kind of acquisitions without having to go out and deploy capital themselves into these projects. They're also launching in the, uh, they launched in, in July in the QTC, in the OTC QB in the US. So they get, they have more exposure to some of the US uh, institutional and retail investors who are prying the company and kind of getting it more notoriety in the market. And they're also making agreements with IO Industries for um, high performance and high quality solutions for digital applications. And this is a company that's been doing this since 1991. And they're setting contracts with Amped, uh, kind of showing you that the infrastructure has been built. They're making acquisitions to expand their user base, reduce how much it costs them to put, put, put money in the quote unquote ground or the infrastructure. And now they're just generating sales from the infrastructure that they've already set in place. So if you look at the revenue breakdown, which is probably the most important thing for a tech heavy company is hardware sales since last August on 2020 have become less prevalent than some of the uh, software licensing fees or the platform fees and the support maintenance. So once you get the infrastructure going, uh, not to say it like this, but they get you hooked 
on their platform or on their on their access on their technology, they they charge you maintenance fees for updates, EDC, just in case your engineers need to be re re-educated on how the system is going, EDC to keep to keep that relationship going. So I, I say get hooked on you, but it's more it's it's kind of common these days uh, to to kind of get your cla- your customers to come through in that kind of repetitive sales sales motion. So it's quite a broad business model that has a steady base of investment already and they're just making acquisitions trying to trying to grow that base now <laughs> that is amped ampd on the uh on the canadian exchange and uh chartman is going to tell us what it's been doing exciting times rob uh you know we talked about this company before i think we uh last time we we're talking about it i've drawn this trend line so i think we were talking about that breakout uh the stock ripped past 27 and a half cents here, uh, went up to test highs here, 45 cents. And then basically since that time, since mid-August, uh, well, end of August to uh, now, we've just been ranging uh, between 45 cents and 30 cents here to the uh, downside here. Uh, really exciting these last two days, actually. So uh, Chris touched on you know all the positive cases here for AMP, but Metaverse is something that everyone is into right now and anything with Metaverse is getting and garnering attraction. Uh, Amped on Friday on the 26th at 6 p.m. put out this uh, news piece here that they raised 6.94 million via oversubscribed non-brokered private placement to invest in Metaverse initiatives. And uh, this is how the stock reacted uh, on Monday when the news was finally, uh, when traders could trade the news. Uh, as it came out Friday uh, after the markets closed, we had a nice 28% gain on Monday. And if I take you guys here to the volume, uh, we had big volume on that Monday as well with 1.1 million shares traded, uh, quite uh, a large amount. And you don't see that type of number for, uh, well, for quite some time. I mean, the volume is usually traded is uh, in six figures. Uh, okay, there we go. The last time we saw a million shares and two million shares traded was back in August. Uh, So a nice little uh, bump there in volume with 1.1 million. Uh, Really strong breakout here. And I wanna highlight today's candle actually, the markets closed just 24 minutes ago. So this is the daily candle that we are working with. And uh, you can sort of see I've drawn this resistance line here at 45 cents. So think of that as basically a a price ceiling. Uh, We did get a breakout here when was this November 8th? Uh, and uh, that was looking pretty good because you know we did close above all these bodies. We've never seen a close like that uh, for quite some time, but basically the follow through did not carry on. There's no momentum to carry the stock forward. And instead we basically had a false breakout. We broke back down, we tried again to break out, uh, but the sellers came in once again and we just ended up staying in the range. But after today, uh, well, after yesterday with that strong momentum close, the day after, you do want to see follow through, right? You, know, you want to see that follow through sustain the move if it is going to be, uh, you know, further momentum down the road here. And I really like this candle because you did see price pull back to retest that 45 zone and the buyers were waiting and they stepped in and they took the uh, close, uh, almost, you know, taking out the highs of the day. The highs of the day today uh, was traded at 50 cents. Um, and it closed at 47 and a half cents. So we should probably talk about 50 cents as well. That is generally seen as a, a important psychological zone for these stocks under $1. So I think in the near term here, let, let's see if the stock can stay above 45 cents uh, with the volume and you know with uh, the momentum today on that retest, it's looking really positive. I think if you get that close above 50 cents, you take out another important psychological zone and I'm going to just scroll out here because, to be honest, there's no more. Well, maybe there's some resistance here at 60 cents, but I think uh, the next long term resistance you're looking at is basically previous all time record highs at 70 cents. Uh, so it's looking really exciting. There's a lot of room for the stock here to move. Um, as Chris said, you know, all the, the, the great positive news there. And I think uh, the stock is going to get a bit more of a bump here and more interest, uh, specifically on the, the metaverse push here, as we saw yesterday. And I just love to see that little uh, September rally after the last yeah. investor, uh, last uh, equity guru investor roundtable. Oh, by the way, um, Chris, before you pass out your money and what you might do here, tell us about the lid that you're wearing because 
if people are watching this the day that it's released, that would be Thursday, and you have a little something going on. No, oh, Thursday night we're at Studio Nightclub, Nation Extreme Wrestling. The chase for the championship final rounds will be taking place. Uh, tickets are thirty bucks, and it's going to be a, a gong a gong show uh, in a good way. <laughs> uh, Saturday night we had the first few rounds; it was a sellout and uh, lots of good vibes. Um, we will crown a, the first champion of Nation Extreme Wrestling, and uh, then we go to the Commodore on January fifteenth. Going to be great. All right, back to Amped. Uh, look, there are a few things that I love about this company. I, I, the people who are behind it, I know they're real operators, right? These guys have been in this business for 20 years. And, you know, as much as virtual reality has been a 40-year a project that's not yet taken off, um, these guys have been at the cutting edge of delivering video game hosting, uh, rendering. You remember back in the day when, when crypto first took off, blockchain was a big deal, and everyone was buying their servers as quickly as they could get them. And then when blockchain fell off a cliff, everyone said, oh, well, we're going to use our servers for video render. Not one company did. Because the first thing you have to do in order to make that change is to actually know people in the video rendering business. These guys have worked with video game, video game companies, movie distributors for years. They've been actually building out their production studios. So they have the contacts. The second thing you, do, you need to do is to have an actual setup that works for video rendering, and that's not ant miners that are mining Ethereum. The third thing you need to do is be able to wrestle these guys away from Amazon Web Services, Google, and Microsoft. Now, that's the real hard bit, and that's why Amped has taken a couple of years to really get its wheels moving, because the first thing you've got to do is prove that you can do it. You've got to find one big client that will allow themselves to be the hamster, uh, the canary in the coal mine, and actually show that you can deliver. Well, they got that in Bardell. Now they're starting to bring in more and more and more clients, but it's taken some time. Revenues have been you know, slowly moving up and not nearly as quickly as, as the market would like, but now they're starting to get their, their shit together. The one thing I will say, in, in, you know, and I'm always the guy who says, look, I, like a little league coach, that makes his kid run extra laps before he picks him. I want our client companies to be uh, looked at in an unbiased way. One of the guys that's coming in heavily on these financing is Sheldon Inwintosh. Now, he's got a reputation as someone who comes in heavy, drives up the price, and then leaves. And so that is a concern for me as someone who's been in this stock for a long time. The other side of that is when he comes in heavy, the price moves. And we're seeing that right now. Mm -hmm. One thing that we look at the price action today that I'm a little concerned about is the gap between the bid and the ask, right? The amount of money that people are prepared to pay for the stock and the amount of money that people are asking for the stock. The bid is at 45 and a half at the end of the day. The ask is at 50. So that tells me that there's a couple of competing interests that are either stacking in, looking for stock, and a couple that are selling. It's not a broad base of volume, right? It's not like a thousand people buying and selling. It's big guy here and big guy there. Now, what happens when one of those big guys is done? Well, if the big guy sellers are done, then the stock goes to the moon. If the big guy buyers are done, the stock has a hard time. So over the last uh, couple of months, what we've seen is a lot of up, a lot of down, and not a lot of static, except for when the 30 cent private placement was announced. Uh, then you saw that through the month of October, the stock did not move because people who had stock that were above that price were selling to get into the private placement. People that were going to buy the stock were uh, buying that, those shares, but not getting any traction upwards as a result. As soon as that private placement pretty much closed, then it started moving. And a 30 cent uh, private placement right now at 48 and a half cents it's a pretty good deal for everyone who got into it. I'd be looking at four months' time to hopefully the stock is on a move and uh, uh, when that private placement becomes free trading, you don't get that downward pressure that you often get. If they can continue this run, and four months is a good amount of time, there's plenty of things that you can't put out as news while you're doing that private placement, but you can after the fact. So I would expect over the next month that they'll be rat-a-tatting out some updates. And if I'm thinking about where I'm going to put that 7,500 bucks of your money, Rob, I think that uh, I'd probably put half in around now and I'd be looking at the rest to see if we get that up and down activity. If we do, 
then buy on the dips and uh, sell on the rips. Nope. Good answer. TK? So I have to cross check this, but I think in September, I probably put, I probably put money in and it's probably, it's done well now. So I won't add anything now because of everything that Chris has laid out. And I think what we talked about previously is playing out. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm getting my previous money's worth. So I'm, I'm kind of thanking the past me for doing everything that, <laughs> that he did. So for, for now, I'm That's sitting in yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm waiting and waiting for another opportunity to get around the same average cost basis. There we go. So you're not there spending any money right now? Yeah. Okay. Michelle? I'm going to play with uh, TK's tune there as well. I think uh, I remember I, had, I took a position as well in September. I would be adding here, though, just based on the technicals uh, with that breakout and uh, that retest there. So I'm going to be adding 2,000 more here and uh, riding this. If we do get a break below 37.5 or 37.5 cents here, I think uh, that's when I would be looking to possibly add uh, a bit more. But um, if that happens, I think, you know, the stock might range. Uh, a little bit, but I like the the pop here, and I think I'm adding to my initial position there, and I let this ride going forward. And if we get that close above fifty cents, uh, I might be enticed might be enticed to add a bit more as well. All right, not too bad. I should I should also add this is not a client company of ours, um, uh, but it is a company that our company has invested a lot in over the last year. I think we're averaging about twenty five cents. Um, definitely our biggest position. And part of that is that I, I know the guys that are behind it and I know they're straight shooters and I know that they are bonkers smart and connected and they're onto something that I think is going to be really massive. That's true. Bonkers smart, always good, especially when you're sipping a midi. Uh, Screw up, man. He's Australian <laughs> right there. Chris. you got to get the schooner. I was more the schooner guy, actually. I used to walk around a bar picking them up. That was my job. No, me too. Yep. Chris Perry up there, Michelle over there, TK down there. Please listen to their advice, but please do your own research because they can't guarantee anything in terms of what they've told you. Neither can past performance guarantee future results with AMPT. AMPD on the Canadian Exchange. It is uh, AMPT is the company as well. And that's who we've been talking about. We'll see you next time on the Equity Guru Investor Roundtable.